All right, so let's take a look at the practice test for finding the LCD for a group of rational expressions. All right, so we come down here to problem number four. This is what we're going to be working on. So I already have this guy on the notepad ready for us. So the first thing you'd really want to do is factor everything, okay? Is there anything I can cancel or make simpler, okay, when I look at each rational expression? So this one right here, obviously you could cancel this with this, okay? So I could really write this as 4 over 3x. This one I'm going to say is 2x minus 1 over. If I pulled out a 6x, right, because I have 6x squared and I have 42x, each of those I could pull out a 6x from. So if I pull that out inside, what I'm going to have is x, okay, minus, and then I would have 7, right? Because 6x times x would be 6x squared. 6x times negative 7 would be negative 42x. Okay. So then here, what I would do is I would say 3x squared minus 10x plus 9. Can't really factor that. So let's just leave that as 3x squared minus 10x plus 9. And this is over. You have this guy right here, which I can factor, right? I could pull out an x squared. So that would give me a 2x plus a 1 here, okay? So nothing really to cancel anywhere else other than this. So now I'm looking at my denominators. If I want the LCD, I really want the LCM of the denominators. So I want this and this and this. That's specifically what I'm looking at here, okay? So let's come down here and think about this. So when you find the LCM, you basically build it from the prime factors. Now, when variables get involved, when binomial factors get involved, it gets a little bit confusing. So let's first start with everything that we have. So we have 3x, so I would put that in. So I would put in 3x, okay? Then here I have 6x. Well, what is 6x? 6x is really 3 times 2 times x. Is there a duplicate involved? Well, yeah, I have a 3 here and a 3 here. So I don't need to put another 3 in here because I always go with the largest number of repeats. There's one 3 in here. There's one 3 in here. The largest number of repeats is 1. So I don't need to add another 3. But I do have a 2 here, okay? So this 2 now needs to go in. So I can put times 2, okay? I don't need to put another x in because I already have one. So the largest number of repeats is still 1, okay? Then I have this quantity here or this factor of x minus 7. So let's go ahead and put that in, okay? Now I move down the list and I see what else I have. Here I have x squared, so that is x times x, okay? So do I already have an x involved? Yes, but now I have x times x, so the largest number of repeats is not one now, it's gonna be two. So I can go ahead and put another x in here, and I know this is inconvenient, I'll combine this to x squared in a moment, but I'm just putting this in here, okay? So we can get rid of that. And then I have this quantity here of two x plus one, that's nowhere else, so I just throw it in. So everything goes in, every factor goes in, okay? The only exception to that is if there's a repeat, you go with the largest number of repeats, okay? So that's the main thing here. So that's why we only have x squared here instead of putting an x in and an x again and, you know, an x squared. So some people put basically x to the fourth power in there when you only need x squared, okay? So from here, I can just go through and multiply everything and say that my LCM of the denominators, which again is called the LCD, is gonna be two times three, which is six, times basically x times x, which is x squared, times this quantity x minus seven, and then times this quantity, which is two x plus one, okay? So that's how we get the LCD of the denominators for this problem.